welcome to day three of Everest VBBS, Virtual Vacation Bible School. Uh, we had so much fun the past two days and we're, again, really excited to see what's going to happen today. We're going to start off by singing our first song and then we're going to get started. So let's sing our theme song together. singing everybody I miss hearing all of your voices and I wish that we could see everybody screaming and dancing and having loads of fun so uh, although we cannot do that in person we would still love your pictures and videos of you completing these activities so if you guys have any of those you can send them our way and we would love to put a slideshow together and post it at the end of the week um, so today we're going to learn that God has the power to heal and like the past two days we're going to have a motion for this as well and our motion is just going to be like like healing our arm that's what we're going to do where God has the power to heal um, so you know sometimes our bodies get hurt sometimes you know we get sick we have a cold or a fever or we even break bones but also, like, sometimes we feel sad. 
and uh, sometimes we feel unhappy and a little blue. Um, and God has the power to heal those things. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we talk about uh, today and what we're going to learn, I want to review what we talked about the past two days. So the past two days, we've talked a lot about Elijah and how God has the power to provide. And this was our motion for that. And how God has the power to comfort. And God provided for Elijah and he comforted Elijah during his time of needs. And our two characters that helped us with that yesterday, uh, well, the past two days, uh, was Climber and uh, how God provided uh, uh, snow leopards with what they need to survive out in the wild. And then yesterday we talked about Cliff because he's so like cuddly and you just want to snuggle with him all day long. So we are going to meet our new Bible buddy for today and then we're going to uh, talk a little bit more about what today's going to look like. Woohoo! Time here at Everest VBS is just flying by. Get it? Flying? Oh, well, now do you get it? I'm Mallory, a bar-headed goose. That's just a little nod to those stunning black stripes near my eyes. Do you like them? I do. Not to brag or anything, but we bar-headed geese are the highest flying birds on the planet. Yep, those are my peeps. You probably know that geese migrate flying thousands of miles from one place to another. But God made bar-headed geese so we can fly over huge mountain ranges, even as high as Mount Everest. No other animals can get over mountains that high and do it as fast as we do. We fly over mountains that you humans can barely even climb. Yeah, now I'm just honking my own horn. You know, sometimes life's challenges can feel like a giant mountain that you have to overcome. Sometimes your body gets sick or broken or your heart gets hurt. But God's power is big enough to heal hurting bodies and hurting hearts. In the Bible book of Psalm, chapter 147, verse 3, it says this about God. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. That means whether you need healing inside or out, God has the power to heal. We're so excited to have Mallory join us today. And Mallory is going to help us uh, learn our Bible point today. So uh, the type of geese that Mallory is, the, I think it's a bar-headed geese, they can fly over really, really high mountains. Mountains that humans can barely climb. And that's awesome. And that uh, she's a great reminder that God has the power to heal. So we're going to learn our memory verse today. It's from Psalm 147.3. And I need to remember what it says. <laughs> it says, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. So we typically do motions, but today I wanted to do something a little different. And I wanted to create a puzzle for us to do. So we're going to do a puzzle to help us learn this memory verse. Again, uh, send us pictures of you guys doing this puzzle. And um, it's going to be super, super fun. So uh, that is how we're going to learn this memory verse. And then we're going to sing a song. Awesome. So um, again, send us those pictures, those videos of you guys doing your puzzles, singing your song, completing any other activities. Uh, that way we can piece them all together and create a video. So I'm going to pray over our time today at BVBS and then we're going to again sing another song to help us transition into our next activity. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have the power to heal. And Lord, I pray that we will learn something new today and that we will just have so much fun learning about you and uh, your word and what you have to say to us today. In your name we pray. Amen.
Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. Way beyond the blue. about how God has the power to heal. Amazing, right? And we also talked about how God heals Naaman. Even more amazing. So, this is what we're going to do today for our game. Now, I've got with me a handy dandy puzzle. I'm trying to pick up all my pieces here. I've got a handy dandy puzzle right here. And I've got a straw. Okay. So there's a few ways that we can play this game. You can do the puzzle all by yourself, just in front of you, just normal, which is perfectly cool. Or you can put your puzzle on one side of the room or outside somewhere. It doesn't matter where you are. Put your puzzle somewhere one side and put your station to set it up on another side. And you could run back and forth with the pieces and try to make yourself a little relay with that. Or you got a straw. I'm gonna take my wrapper off my straw because I want to, because it's hard to use it without the wrap, with the wrapper. So you have a straw, okay? Now don't break your straw by opening it because if you break your straw, it's not gonna work. And the way that this one will work, if you play it this way, which I think would be a lot of fun, you have one side of the table with your pile of puzzles and the other side of the table where you're gonna set your puzzle up. And you put the straw in your mouth and you, um, and you suck through the straw like you're sucking a drink, go, and as you're doing that, you pick up a puzzle piece like this. But then you let go and your piece is over here. And then you grab the next one. Oh no, I dropped it. Ow. So you just do that. And as you do it, you can like move your pieces around. make this one my so as you put your puzzle together which you can't see that my puzzle is getting together right now you as you get it together you can see the picture that it is which you're probably gonna recognize the story hopefully I really hope so and as you do this you can remember that God has the power to heal because as we put the pieces together that shows that God is healing that God had healed Naaman and he, the pieces are coming together. Like remember how puzzles all broke apart, put them together. It's all together. It's one piece. So once you're all done with your putting your puzzle together, you can color it if you want, you can undo it and you can redo it every day or whatever. You can put tape on it. The possibilities are endless. You don't have to do anything with it either. You can just put it together and be like, Oh cool. My puzzle is done. That's fine too. However, you want to do it just the important part is to have fun and remember that God has the power to heal welcome back to Bible expedition I am so excited to share another story with you today so the past two days we've talked about Elijah and how God provided for Elijah and how God comforted Elijah. And today we're not going to talk about Elijah, but we're going to talk about a friend of Elijah's. 
Um, so remember when yesterday we talked about how Elijah just felt really down because he was all alone and God told him that he was not alone and that he was going to send Elijah somebody and that person was Elijah and uh, they sound they sound like they have similar names but they're totally different people and before we meet Elisha, we need to talk about a man named Naaman. And Naaman was a soldier. And actually, the Bible calls him a mighty warrior. And he was in charge of a really, really big army. And he had to follow lots and lots of orders. So he was an important person. Um, but he was also really sick. Um, and I want you to think about like some of the common health problems that are going on in today's society, in today's world. We have um, the coronavirus, we have COVID-19, and that's a really, really big deal. And lots of people are getting sick from that. Um, and we want, uh, you know, people in the Bible also dealt with illnesses and sickness. And that is uh, something that Naaman had to deal with. He had a tough disease called leprosy. And leprosy caused spots all over your body. And it was a really bad disease to have. Um, so being sick, especially when it shows on the outside, is really hard. And it must have been really hard for Naaman. And there was a young girl from Israel living in Naaman's household. And she told Naaman's wife that Naaman should go to her country, Israel, because there was a prophet there who could heal Naaman's leprosy. And that prophet was Elisha. See, we would connect all the dots. So Elisha. Naaman's wife told Naaman about Elisha and Naaman told the king, and the king sent Elijah to Israel to see if he could be healed. So off went Naaman to find Elisha. And when Naaman got to Elisha's house, uh, Elisha sent out a servant with a message. And this message, this is what the servant said. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of all your leprosy. See, that's not hard to do. You just have to go into the river seven times and then come out. And that sounds pretty easy. And you would think that, um, you know, Naaman would be so excited because, you know, this is something easy that he can do to be healed. Um, but in fact, the exact opposite happened. Naaman was so mad. He was not happy at all and you must be wondering like why why was Naaman angry like that doesn't make sense Naaman was angry because Elisha himself didn't come out to talk to him he uh, Naaman was a commander in the army he was an important person and Elisha had sent out his servant and he wouldn't come talk to him himself and it says um, and he says to like dip himself in the Jordan River. The Jordan River was a dirty river. Like nobody wanted to go in the Jordan River. It was so dirty. So why should Naaman have to go into the Jordan River? Naaman was not happy. He was ready to leave. He was like, let's go. I'm not, I'm not doing this. But his officers who were with him said, this is what they said. Look, we're here. Why not try it? Like what? harm could it do? It's so simple. Let's just try it. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and, um, and Naaman dipped himself in the river seven times. Seven times. He followed Elijah's instructions. God healed Naaman. God has the power to heal. And remember our motion, God has the power to heal. When is a time when God has healed you? I want you to think about that. When is a time that God has healed you? You know, sometimes God's, 
we don't always understand God's plan. It can be confusing sometimes. Um, and he doesn't always heal our bodies here on earth. Have you ever known somebody who was sick that God didn't heal them? Just think about that. That's a really hard thing to understand sometimes. But it's true that um, sometimes God doesn't heal our physical bodies here on earth. And sometimes we, he waits until we're in heaven. And we'll hear more about that later this week. But no matter what, God will heal our hearts on earth. When Naaman went home, something special happened. Even though people in his country worshipped false gods, Naaman decided to worship the one true God. And since Naaman was an important commander in the army, he'd be able to tell lots of people in his country about God and about his love and how powerful he is. I think uh, that is a wonderful, wonderful story about God, how God has the power to heal. God has the power to heal. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for the story of Naaman and Elijah. I thank you that um, you have the power to heal and sometimes we don't necessarily understand um, what all of that means. You know, if, if we are healed from our sickness, but then sometimes people aren't healed and it's confusing and it can be scary, Lord, but we know that you have a plan. Thank you for that reminder today. In your name we pray. It's day three snack time, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. And today uh, we've been learning about how God has the power to heal. Now, this is what we got. We got our orange right here. See it? It's an orange. And I have a I have a Sharpie. Now you don't need a Sharpie. You can use a washable marker. You can use a pen. Just make sure you don't pierce the skin with what we're about to do, okay? So you can do that. Or if you want to do it another way, Go for it, whatever way floats your boat. So, God has the power to heal. And that doesn't just mean physically, 
That means emotionally and spiritually and mentally. So think about some heartful thing, hurtful things that have been said to you. Like someone has told me that I am ugly. That's pretty, that's pretty hurtful. Someone has told me that, um, let's see, what's something else that someone has said? They've told me that I am lazy. Even though I know that I'm not ugly and I know I'm not lazy, it still hurts. They've also told me, they've also told me that I wasn't good enough. And you can write as much or as little as you want to on it. You don't have to write a lot, okay? So what this snack is gonna do is we're gonna peel our orange now. Now, oh, I don't wanna squeeze it in my face. Now, as I peel my orange, I reveal that God has taken that stuff away. So no longer am I not good enough or no longer am I ugly. God has healed that of me. Now it doesn't mean that it go that those thoughts go away. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it gets easier. Because it, it's still hard. But this reminds us that God has the power to heal. So enjoy your orange and remember that God has the power to heal. Hi everybody, we are on day three of uh imagination station and uh, I love this station it's awesome so I have our three ties here because it's day three um, you should have two on each day for your ropes and I also have our snow from day one Woo! that's fun now my hands are really uh, snowy and I have bubbles from yesterday and we talked about how um, those are really comforting, uh, just as God comforts us. And today we're going to play with some Play-Doh. So if you want, you can pull out your Play-Doh now. I'm struggling to open <laughs> my Play-Doh. Um, but you can take out your Play-Doh. And then I just want you to kind of, um, you know, maybe make some things with it, play with it in your hands as, you know, we just talked a little bit. So we're talking about how God has the comfort to heal, not just physical wounds, but um, heal the wounds of our heart as well. And, um, you know, sometimes you can damage, damage Play-Doh, right? Look, I'm ripping it apart. It has multiple rips and tears in it. It just does not look appealing, right? It doesn't look appealing at all. But you know what? God can take something that is broken and he can make it whole again and he can shape us and mold us into something beautiful so what you can do is um, you can just you know play around with this play-doh a little bit and I want you to think about how God can take something that is broken and make it whole and make it beautiful and he does that with us a lot so try to make something um, that doesn't look appealing. Try to make it, make maybe like put it in different pieces. Maybe you make a heart. I don't know how to make a heart in Play-Doh. I mean, maybe we can try it. Um, but maybe you make a heart that is broken. I'm gonna try to make a heart. All right, here's my heart. It's not a very good heart. Here it is not very good and then I'm gonna break it and I'm gonna pull it apart and this is what happens to us sometimes sometimes our heart breaks look at that but then you know what God takes that and all the other pieces and he can make us whole again and he can make us into something beautiful now this is a really bad example because I'm not good at making hearts in Play-Doh, <laughs> but see, God can form us and he can uh, mold us into something beautiful. Even though we might feel broken right now, he can still use us. 
So that is our lesson for today. So you can play around with this Play-Doh and, um, you know, don't forget to put your responses to the prayer prompts on your uh, prayer ropes. Well, that is day three of Everest VVBS. We are so happy that you were able to join us today. Um, you know, we talked about how God has the power to heal. God has the power to heal. And that is a heavy topic to discuss and to talk about. Um, you know, we physically get sick and, uh, you know, our hearts get sick sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, people say some things that hurt our feelings or we feel left out of certain activities and um, and sometimes like it really it really really hurts but you know what there is nothing too big that God can't heal God can do amazing things and he can heal all of our wounds and um, that's really what we want to take away from today's uh, session from today's uh, lesson that there is nothing too big that God can't heal. So let's pray together. Um, and yeah, then we're going to sing some songs to close us out. Dear God, we thank you that you have the power to heal all of our wounds. And Lord, sometimes we don't understand it. We don't understand, um, why we aren't physically healed or we don't understand why our friends or our families aren't physically healed. But Lord, you have a plan. And we need to remember that plan. Even when it's really difficult to understand and it's confusing. 
And Lord, we thank you that you have the power to heal our heart wounds as well. And the things that we uh, physically cannot see on the outside. So Lord, um, we want to bring those heart wounds to you today. And we um, just want to give those to you. In your name we pray. Amen. We will see you tomorrow for day four. Day four of Everest VBBS. Guys, we're halfway through. Uh, it's been so much fun so far. We've really enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to send us our or your pictures and videos so that we can put them all together. You can email them to us. You can send them to us directly. Uh, either way, we would love to have those. Uh, so don't forget to send those. And we will see you tomorrow. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.